Hi, my name is Brad. I'm the IT manager for Evans Textiles, and in this video, we're going to go through the setup of your Nuance blind to an Everglide hub, and then connecting these devices to an Alexa or Google Home smart device. First thing we're going to do is pair up the blind to a remote control. So if we plug in the battery. The blind will shun. We then take the remote control, hold the stop button for three seconds. Blind will shunt again. That's the blind paired to the remote control. Okay, now that we've got your blind paired up to the remote control, the next step is to pair your Everglide hub to your home Wi-Fi. So in order to do this, we download the connector app from either the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Once downloaded, you can click on the sign up button and enter your email address. It then ask you to get, create a new password. Confirm the password again. Now that's done, you're ready to go in and set up your Everglide Home Hub in the location settings. So from the menu, we click on location. We've already got the My House location in there. So we click on the cog at the side for the settings and we click on add new bridge. It'll then ask you for the Wi-Fi that the bridge is gonna to connect to. Select the Wi-Fi and we enter the password. It will then tell you to hold the set button on the hub for around two seconds. The hub's now in pairing mode so we can continue. Now we need to go to the settings on the device and change your network your Wi-Fi network to the hub. On an Android device, when you connect to the hub, because there's no internet connection on the hub, it will pop up and it'll ask you a question about whether you wish to stay connected. Now, you have to select this option and choose yes, otherwise it'll switch back to your normal Wi-Fi and you'll not be able to configure the hub. So once your Wi-Fi is connected, we go back to the app and the app will now go through and it will try and detect the hub on the Wi-Fi that you've just connected to. Once it's detected the hub, the status light will start to change and it will pass the Wi-Fi details to the hub, which will then connect to your home Wi-Fi network. Your phone will do the same. That will connect to your home Wi-Fi and detect that the hub is now connected and then you can name your hub. Once them settings are saved, you can then go through, perform any updates that need doing for the firmware on the hub and then you can set up your blind. Okay, now that we've got your hub set up to your home Wi-Fi, we have the blind set up to a remote control. So the next stage is we're going to set the blind to the hub itself. So back to your mobile device, create a room inside of the app, call it whatever you like. We'll call this one sitting room. And save. Now that you've got that saved, you can click on that room to add a new device. We click the plus button in the top right hand corner and click device. We then choose the honeycomb blind and click next. It will already have the bridge in there, which we named earlier as home. We click next. And now the options for pairing your blind are gonna either be by motor or by remote. If you're using the unidirectional motor with the remote control, then you want to pair by remote. 
If you're using the bi-directional motor with the bi-directional remote, then you choose by motor. Now, the app will tell you to press the people one button in order to pair up the motor or the blind to the hub. Because we can't get to that because it's sealed, we just plug the battery back in, the blind will shun, we click on the next button, it will shunt again as the app detects the blind, we click on next again, and now we can name the blind. So we'll call this one front window. Now that that's been saved, we've now got a blind set up and configured to the hub. We can click on that blind and we can adjust it, open and close, set the limits or set any scenes or times that we need to. that we need to. The next stage is to now install the hub with Alexa so that you can voice control these devices and open and close with simple voice command either through Alexa or Google Home. So on your smart device we now go to the Amazon Alexa app. We go to the menu at the top and we choose skills and games. In the search box at the very top of the screen, we enter connector as the name of the skill that we're going to use. And it should be the first one in the list. We select the connector app and we choose enable to use. Now this will ask you for the username and password that you used when creating your account on the connector app itself. So now we'll enter the details. email address and password and then click sign in. It then asks you to authenticate this to authorise the, the accounts to connect together and that's your connector now linked to the Alexa device. The next step is to tell Alexa to discover the devices that you need to control. So it'll have that option as a button to start with, so you just click on that button. It can take up to 20 seconds to search for your devices. Once your devices are found, you can then open and close them with a power on or power off command. Once you've got these configured and working through Alexa, you can then go to your routines or your groups and create relevant groups for them. So you may want to tell Alexa to open all living room blinds or all dining room blinds. And you can configure that all through there. Okay, so now if everything's gone well, we should have your hub connected to the Alexa device, both devices on your home Wi-Fi and everything working fine. If it's not and you have any issues with controlling your devices with your Alexa or with your app, then it could be that the hub is not connected to your home Wi-Fi correctly. It will signify this with a blue light. If this blue light isn't on or it's flashing any different colours, then we need to look at the configuration for this. Now, a couple of prerequisites for this is that your Wi-Fi network has to be generating an 802.11b network, the 2.4 gigahertz network. This is not a standard, it's not always generated on every network. So you might have to speak to your internet provider in order for them to enable it or to talk you through the process of enabling this yourself. Once you've configured that and you've got a blue light on your hub, then you can finish the setup process as normal to connect to your Alexa. Now that once all that's set up, if you've got your blind in position and you think that the top position is not in the right place and you want to change this, then you can go into your connector app, go into the room, that the blind is in. Click on the blind and choose the cog for the settings for that blind. Once you're in the settings, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's three options, top position, bottom position, and favorite position. Now we want to adjust the top position this time. So we press the top position. It'll warn us that we're gonna reset the limits for this. So we click yes, and then we click next. 
the blind shunt to show that it's now in the position to take the new settings. We can adjust with the up and arrow buttons, the up and down arrows. Once we're happy with the position, we click done. That's now the new top position saved. We can repeat the process for the down position and we can also do the same for the favorite position. Now everything's done there, everything's working fine. We can go back. Now in the main window for your app, for your connector app, there is an option that says timers. Now you can set these timers so that they will open and close your blinds without you having to interact with either your Alexa or your connector app. So if you click on timer and click the plus button in the top right hand corner, you can now do add new timer and it's a device timer to make sure the device opens and closes at a certain time. It'll ask you to select which blind, so we're choosing the front window, and we'll set the position we want it to be at on the slider at the top. So we want this to be 100% closed. The next section underneath is for the times and days that you want this to happen. So we'll say we want this to close on a Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock. We save this and that's the new timer set up at Monday to Friday closing the blinds to 100% at 8 o'clock every evening. Signified that this is enabled with the switch on the right hand side of that timer switch to blue. Now that's the timers configured the Wi-Fi configure and your blind positions reset. We've gone through the setup of the devices now. We've configured the blind with your hub. We've gone through any troubleshooting that you needed to do in case there's any problems connecting to your Wi-Fi and everything's connected to the Alexa. The next stage is we need to now show you how to connect all your devices to the Google Home Hub. So the Google Home works slightly differently to the Alexa. It's no longer called a skill in this, it's called a service. So if we launch the Google Home app, we click on Add for adding a new device. We click on Set Up Device and we choose Have Something Already Set Up. We choose this option because we've already configured everything in the connector app, so we've no need to configure everything inside of Google as well. We can just add the connector skill, or the service in this case, and then that will detect the blind that we've already set up. So in the search box at the top, we just type in connector. Again, it's the first one, or the only one that will come up in the list at this point. We select that item, and it'll ask us to do the same as it did with Alexa and link the two accounts together. So you enter your email address and password that we created in the connector app, not your Alexa one or not your Google Gmail account. We're using the account that's been created on the connector app. We sign in and it'll ask to grant permission. We choose yes. That's the two accounts linked together. Google will now look for any devices that you've set up in your hub and create them devices on your Google Home. So when we go back to the home screen, we can now see the front window blind that we set up in the connector app that we're now showing in Google. We can open this device, name it, put it in a room, do anything that we need to, and it's now ready for voice command. Thank you.